Thank you. All right, welcome back. I'm Webb Floyd with the uh, Army Erdic as well. Uh, my background is primarily in fog coverage, but today I'm going to talk pavement cutting on behalf of Ms. Haley Bell at Erdic. She's our cutting, breaking, excavating uh, expert. She's really looked at quite a few of these different attachments and technologies through the years, primarily on behalf of the Air Force. Next slide, please. So just a quick objective there at the end of this, you're going to have a little bit more knowledge about cutting paper. Next slide, please. <laughs> so safety slide first. So you want to familiarize yourself with the equipment uh, as well as the backup equipment. Locate the horns on the prime mover that you're using. Uh, wear a seatbelt when you're in the equipment. Do not stand in front of a rotating saw blade, please. Uh, uh, ear pro, eye pro, vest, and a hard hat or helmet. Next slide. So we're going to look at two attachments here. Uh, the first being the Cuts Incorporated Diamond Blade Saw Attachment that was identified during the EADR JCTD. Most of you have probably seen a brief on this by this point. I know uh, all the folks that visited early back in November got some hands-on time with this one. But it's a CTL attachment that cuts pavement. Uh, it's got two different got yeah, two different blade lengths, a 36 and a 42, but it provides a pretty narrow cut, just like your standard floor saw wood that you guys are familiar with already. Uh, it does require water, and it will cut through dowels and rebar and pavement much better than our uh, rock saw or wheel saw wood. You can see the attachment there. Um, yeah, not much to it. There's just a standard rock saw attachment. It does not have a left to right track on it, so you're going to have to do a good job of lining that blade up. Next slide, please. So again, all right, both the slides are in different order. So this is the rock saw here. This is the one you're familiar with. I know there's a, a couple around Bragg Liberty somewhere. Um, so there's two different variations of this. There's the SW345D, which is an 18-inch maximum depth of cut, and then the 360 Bravo that's a 24-inch maximum depth of cut. One of the big differences between this one and the other one is that this one doesn't require water and it's going to give you a much wider cut. This one makes about a three and a half inch wide cut using these uh, teeth that you see here, the bits. Uh, we brought some extra bits. We're going to go through the process while we're training of how to change the bits out. Uh, our techs are going to talk to you guys about that while we're out in the field. Um, this presentation here is pretty high level. We're not getting into the nitty gritty of what hydraulic flow rates you need and all those types of things. Uh, so this particular saw here, the rock saw or the wheel saw, we use those terms pretty much interchangeably. It doesn't really cut through reinforcing material very well unless it's old and corroded. And it, this one does have a 22 inch side shift. Next slide please. So for our cutting method, we want uh, all the cuts to be counterclockwise around the crater just to keep everything standardized. And uh, as you'll notice with the diamond blade saw, it is shifted to one side of the machine. So it sits on the left side of the machine, so if you cut counterclockwise, you don't have as much wasted <coughs> pavement on the outside of the crater. Because as you see there, it must be on the next slide. But there's a 27 inch offset that's required to use the diamond blade saw from the center of the track to the center of the blade, so that you don't have that track sitting in the crater because the diamond blade saw will tend to bind if you're not sitting on a level surface or if you start trying to track left and right while you cut them. So we're going to cut in straight lines with both the saws. We're not going to move that left stick on the CTL at all to the left or the right while we're cutting. So for concrete that's less than six inches thick or asphalt, we're going to plunge the saw full depth and make the cut going forward. For concrete that's greater than six inches thick, um, for the diamond blade saw specifically, we're going to plunge to about half depth or about six inches or so, cut forward, drop the saw the rest of the way, cut backwards for the rest of the cut. It actually is faster to cut that way rather than doing a full plunge and thick concrete and cutting with the diamond blade saw. Again, that's just with the diamond blade saw. With the rock saw and the wheel saw, we're going to plunge full depth and make our cut. Um, you can see at the corners of this picture there are overcuts, overlaps in the line. So if you think about that round saw blade, you're going to have to actually patch the end point of the crater to get a full depth cut at that corner. So we're looking for four to six inch long overcuts at each corner. And again, don't try to adjust the CTL left or right while you're cutting. If the cut starts to walk, you kind of just have to walk with it. You're not going to be able to make any adjustments while it's all blades in the pavement. And again, we're going to go counterclockwise, one side at a time. Next slide, please. 
So both of the saws do require spotting. Um, just real quick, we'll talk about the responsibilities of the spider. So for the diamond blade saw, you're going to monitor the water level in the water tank and make sure that we have consumed all that water in our cutting. Um, there is a water tank that you see here on top of the CTL for the diamond blade saw, and we do a gravity feed with that water. There's no pump that we use. It does have a pump on it, but we use the gravity feed setting rather than messing with that pump. Uh, for the spotter, you're going to turn on and off the valve for that water source on that saw. That's one of your responsibilities. You don't want to open it all the way up. You want to have the uh, operator turn the blade on and you're going to open that water valve until you see a mist coming off the blade. We don't want a whole bunch of water dumping out. We don't need that much water. Um, so another responsibility of the spotter is to line that saw up on the painted lines. So here's where that 27 inch nose is on that previous slide for. So the center of the track, and that's going to be the right hand track, or the, or, sorry, the left hand track that we're cutting counterclock on. The center of that track and the center of that saw blade, we're looking at at least 27 inches, and that's to keep that track from dropping off in that crater and binding that blade. Uh, for the wheel saw, as far as alignment goes, you get them close and you can make some fine tune alignment moves with that side track. Uh, it's another responsibility of the spotter to make sure that the cuts are going full depth. Oftentimes, you'll be able to see, especially with the diamond blade saw, a change in the color of that wash water coming off the blade to let you know that you've passed through the concrete or the asphalt into the underlying material. Want to avoid unnecessary overcuts, and uh, with the diamond blade saw specifically, the spotter can listen to the pitch of that saw blade and know when the blade's about to start to fine. You'll hear it bog down. When you hear it bog down, you want to slow the operator down in its forward movement. Just stop it for a second, let the saw catch up before you start bringing it back forward again. Uh, the saw cutter also has a push broom or a shovel and it's cleaning waste off of that line that's painted to mark the edge of the crater so that they know when they reach the end of the cut. And again, do not stand in front of the rotating saw blade. Next slide. So here's just a quick comparison between those two saws. So the diamond blade saw requires water, the wheel saw does not. Cut width there. The diamond blade saw is only going to be about a quarter inch wide because that's the width of the blade. The rock saw will be three and a half inches wide. Uh, there can be some issues with that really thin cut. Sometimes it's a challenge to excavate around the edges of the crater, especially if you don't have a real crater with a hole in the middle to give you some relief to excavate and break around. So it does require a little bit of finesse in the operator around the edges of that crater to try not to scroll up our existing slabs. Uh, as far as cut rate goes, the diamond blade saw is a little bit faster. Uh, about 1.8 feet per minute versus one and a quarter feet per minute for the wheel saw, which really starts to add up. If you've got a large crater, if you're in a 20 foot by 20 foot crater, that uh, half a foot per minute difference can make 20 to 25 minutes difference in cutting time around that crater. And from the Air Force perspective, if you're doing a sequence of 18 craters or 54 craters or 175,000, however many land set in the, the major repair, was a uh, I mean, you're looking at hours difference in cutting time across a, a sequence of papers here. Next slide, please. So again, just two personnel here, an operator and a cutter. Next slide, please. Sorry, an operator and a spotter. And that's it. Any questions on uh, the sauce? <coughs>